John Lee compared training the mind to raising a child. You have a small child, and when it cries, you have to be able to read the cry. Some cries are a sign of hunger. Some cries are a sign of wanting to be held, taken out, walked around. Some cries are just orneriness. So you have to figure out what kind of cry it is, and then you can provide what the child needs. Or if it's just being ornery, then you leave it alone for a while. And this way the child grows up happy, well cared for, but not spoiled. In the same way with the mind. You have to be able to read its needs, read the needs of the body, too. What kind of breathing would be good right now? Long breathing, short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light. What combination of those kinds of breathing would be best? You can experiment and see how the body responds, how the mind responds today. And don't expect that it will respond the same way tomorrow. It may need something different then. But you realize that you've got lots of tools up your sleeve. And then there are times when the mind is not willing to settle down at all. And so you try to figure out, is it because the breath is not comfortable, or what's the mind preoccupied with? You try to reason with its preoccupation to make it see that it's better to settle down than to worry about things or to get fixated on other thoughts. And if it's not obedient, well, you just say, okay, you can go think of what you want, but I'm not going to pay any attention to your thoughts. That way the thoughts die down, because it's your attention to your thinking that keeps it going. So sometimes you have to counteract the reasoning behind the thinking, and other times you just have to be stubborn. But it all comes under the principle of having lots of techniques, lots of approaches, and getting a sense of what the mind needs, what the body needs, and then providing that, responding in an appropriate way. And the mind will respond. It will grow up happy, well cared for, but as I said, not spoiled. That way it becomes a mind that you can live with easily. Because we're all going to be facing aging, illness, and death at some point. And if the mind hasn't been well trained, it's not going to be a good companion as you go through these things. So you've got to train it first. So it actually is a friend and is helpful to you as the body ages, as you go sick. Even as you die, you want the mind to be under control and an aid in not having to suffer from these things. That requires a very mature mind, and so you have to teach it how to grow up. So it's not just running after its moods all the time, but it knows what should be done, and it's able to convince itself that it wants to do it. That's when you know that your mind is mature. <laughs>